I want to talk today about major, major influences of your moral behavior. And today I want to look at Luke, Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9 is a pretty extensive chapter. It's made up of 60 verses, 60 verses. And it is the third longest chapter in the entire book of Luke. When you go through the entire book of Luke, there are 24 chapters, 24 chapters. And there are only two other chapters that have more verses than Luke chapter 9. There is Luke chapter 1, and then there's Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 1, and then Luke chapter 22, and then Luke chapter 9. And I want to walk you through, I want to walk you through some of Luke chapter 9, because when you read this chapter you will discover that the main characters are Jesus and his disciples. Jesus and his disciples. I want you to walk away knowing that just because the Lord allows you to do ministry and just because the Lord affords you the opportunity to see miracles, it does not mean you won't ever make mistakes. <laughs> Boy, somebody ought to hear me. God brought somebody here today just to hear what I just said. Just because you do ministry and just because you behold miracles, it won't keep you from making mistakes. Because everybody makes mistakes. 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 And when it comes to mistakes in your life and my life, there are past, present, and future. There's some stuff we did back in the day. As late as yesterday. <laughs> that was a mistake. There's some stuff we're doing right now. That's a mistake. And there's some stuff that we're going to do up the road. That's a mistake. Because everybody makes mistakes there was a lady who said to her husband once she said she said honey I I don't know I don't know what it is but every room I walk into and there's other women no matter how many of us are in there I am always the most beautiful woman in the room and I wanted to I wanted to share that with you to find out do you think that's pride on my part? He said, no, it's not pride. It's a mistake. Because, <laughs> Earl, everybody. <laughs> everybody makes mistakes. And what I want to do today, Miss Sarah, is I want to show you just a portion of this chapter where the disciples made a major mistake. Where the disciples made, the disciples made, the, dis the disciples. Listen, these are not unbelievers. These are not people who don't know the Lord. These are followers of Jesus. And they make a mistake. And I just want to walk you through verses 51 through 56. 51 through 56. 51 through, I wish I could cover all 60 verses. Because if I covered all 60 verses, you would walk away saying, Luke chapter 9 is literally 
one of the most exciting reads in all the Bible. But I just want to cover 51 through 56. And I want, I want to share with you what can influence the way you behave. What can influence the way you behave? Grab your outline. Let me give you the answers. 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 And then we'll read. We'll read. We'll read. Uh, here's number one. Communal opposition. Communal opposition can be a major influencer of your moral behavior. Communal opposition. You know what that means? How people treat you. <laughs> How people treat you. How people treat you. Communal. Com 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 communal. Where we get our word community. And what I want you to grab, what I want you to grab from point number one is, is there going to be groups of people that don't do right by you? <laughs> communal. Commun commun com 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 communal opposition. And that can be a major influencer of your moral behavior. Let me give you number two. Let me give you number two. Let me give you number two. Individual disposition. Individual disposition can be a major influencer of your moral behavior. Remember, I'm talking about what determines how you behave. What determines how you behave. Uh, so it's 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 opposition on the outside, but then it's also your disposition on the inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Individual, individual disposition. Watch this last one right here. Number one was good. Number two was gooder. You know this the goodest one, right? You do know that. You do know this is the goodest one. All right, here we go. Here it is. Mutual transition. Mutual transition can be a major influencer of your moral behavior. Mutual transition. Explain, Pastor. Explain. Okay. Communal opposition is the way people treat you. Individual disposition is the way you think, the way you perceive the way you take stuff. Mutual transition, which means what can determine the way you live for God is your ability to move on. <laughs> your, 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 your ability that in spite of what they're doing and how I'm feeling, I gotta keep it moving. Oh, I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. In spite of what they are doing to you and in spite of how you feeling about it, you got to move on. In spite of what they said, in spite of what they did not say, in spite of what you think and what you feel, And I want to show you, I want to show you how the, how the disciples, how the disciples, how the disciples ran into all three. Now watch the communal, watch the communal opposition. Look at verse 53. But they did not receive Jesus. They did not receive Jesus. They did not receive his disciples. And look at why they didn't receive him. Well, leave 53 there. Because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. You got to get this. It does not say that they did not receive Jesus because he did something wrong to them. The text says that they did not receive Jesus. Well, I'm going to drop it right here. Because of where he was going. Which means, Mike, some people don't receive you in life because they see where you're going. 
They see where you're going. And everybody can't take where you're going because misery loves company. And when they see you're not going down misery lane with them, when they see you're not going down complaining court with them, when they see you're not going down hard times, hallelujah, with you. Now, biblically, Jews and Samaritans hated one another. Because Samaritans were half Jews. They were mixed. They were mixed. They were mixed. And Jews and Samaritans didn't like one another. Jews didn't like Samaritans. Samaritans liked Jews. So much to the point that when a Jew had to go through Samaria, they took the long way around. Kind of like when people don't want to speak to you at church, they take the... Ah, it's making sense now, right? That's why John chapter 4 is so key. When Jesus went to Samaria and met the woman at the well. She was a Samaritan woman, remember? Remember? And remember Jesus said, I must needs go to Samaria. And the disciples was like, you're going by yourself. We don't fool with those people. And Jesus went there and met the woman at the well. And remember the woman had five husbands and the one she was living with wasn't her husband. They were kind of shacking up. And, and the disciples came and saw Jesus talking to this woman. And when they saw Jesus talking to this woman, they like, OMG. She didn't got Jesus. She's a bad man. <laughs> Just this fine. Because, you know, we see stuff and we make assumptions. So they did not receive. They did not receive him because of where he was going. There's mutual. There's, there's, there's communal opposition. And here's what I want you to gather from point number one. And I'm moving on. Everybody don't receive you. Everybody don't like you. Everybody don't embrace you. And there are some people in life that don't like you and don't know why they don't like you. There are some people that don't like you and they've never met you. They've never had a conversation with you. But somebody that y'all happen to know together poisoned them as it relates to you. And if you're not careful, you will find yourself behaving in a way that's ungodly because of the way people don't receive you. Preach it all, Pastor Kerwin Broussard Lee Sr. Communal. Communal. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, so, so. You see the communal, see the communal opposition? Watch the individual disposition. Put the next verse up. And when the disciples, James and John, saw this, which I had time to talk about, you can see when people don't like you. <laughs> You can see when people don't want to sit next to you. Come on, don't turn now. Don't turn now. Just, just keep looking straight at you. Now would be a good time to just say, mm. <laughs> and when his disciples, James and John, saw that they weren't warmly received, watch their individual disposition. They said, Lord, do you want us? To command fire to come down from heaven and kill every last one of them. Watch this. Watch this. Then they put a little Bible just like Elijah did in the Old Testament. I love it, Tammy, because this verse teaches us that when people want to do wrong, Dr. Childs, they got Bible. <sighs> And they said, Jesus, Jesus, can we burn this bad boy down? Now, what causes their individual disposition? Their communal opposition. And you want to get to the point in life. Hear me well, Ozzy. You want to get to the point in life where you don't treat people the way they treat you. <laughs> 
Come, I just, I just want to talk to you today. I want to talk to you today. I want to talk to you today. I want to talk to you. You, 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 don't, you don't want to treat people the way they treat you. You want to treat people better than the way they treat you. Wanda, what's amazing. Put, put the verse up again. Put the verse up again where they said, you want us to command fire to come down from heaven. Because what's amazing, Uncle Bob, is earlier in this chapter, Tony Rowe, they had made another mistake. Because earlier in this chapter, there was a man who had a sick son, and he brought him to the disciples to cast out the demon, and they couldn't do it. So the man goes to Jesus, and he says, I, I, I brought my boy to your boys, but they couldn't help. If you can do anything. And Jesus says this. That's why you got to go back and read it. Jesus said, no, it ain't if I can do anything. It's if you can believe. But watch this. This man's experience with the disciples tainted his view of what Jesus could do. Which suggests that some people don't believe in God. Because of their experiences with God's children. God can't be real because my supervisor is a Christian and treats me like. So here's what's amazing. Jesus cast the demon out. And when Jesus cast the demon out, the disciples came back to him and they said privately, how did you do it? And we get that classic passage of scripture where Jesus says this kind of power comes by fasting and praying now here's my point here's my point they couldn't deal with the demon in the boy but now all of a sudden they can call down fire from heaven are y'all getting anything out of this message today which suggests we can use the power of God for our own purposes, but we can't use it to help nobody else. We can use it to benefit ourselves, but we can't use it to benefit the job, the church, the community, the home. Put the verse up. Let's roll this thing out of here. Do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven? Like Elijah did. And my last point right here. And he turned and rebuked him. Watch it, Gabriel. Watch it. Sometimes, Jameson, you got to check people close to you. <laughs> Boy, I got more message than I got moments. And I certainly got more message than I got amens. <laughs> Sometimes you got to check the people that's closest to you. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with that? Give me some places where you got to check folks close to you. At church. At home. At work. On your row. At school. He rebuked him. Look what he says. You don't know what kind of spirit you operate with. You don't know. Watch it, Miss Bertha. You don't know what, which means that some people can be around Jesus but don't have his spirit. <laughs> How can you be close up to me and not have my spirit? He says, you don't know what kind of spirit you are dealing with. 56, 56, last verse, last verse. Look what he says. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy people's lives. To save them. Now watch the mutual transition. And they went to another village. <laughs> they, went, they went to another village. They allowed Jesus to check them. They allowed Jesus to rebuke them. And they left. And here's what I like. Here's what I like. Here's what I like. They left and took their matches with them. <laughs> They left and they didn't blow nothing up. They left. They didn't bust nobody's window. They left and went to another village because there comes a time in life where you got to make up your mind. I'm not going to keep hanging with folks that just tolerate me. 
I'm going to find me some places that appreciate me, that celebrate me. And if this is not the village for me, I'm not going to sit here and be miserable. I'm going to go to a place where they embrace me and I embrace them. They went to another village. they allowed Jesus to rebuke them. And they went to another village. Sometimes if people won't leave you, leave them. <laughs> leave them. Leave them. Leave them. And sometimes before you can leave their presence, get them out your mind. <laughs> Because as long as they got your mind, they will control you. They will determine how you act and how you feel. They see you having a good day and they'll do things to you to mess up your day. But let them know God's been too good to me to allow you. Make up your mind for God I live and for God I die. For God I'll serve and for God I will do right. And if you've got a problem with me, that's your problem. But I have to live life based off of the way God has told me. Where in life is God telling you it's time to go to another village? Come on, singers. Come on, band. Some of you need to have that conversation with somebody you dating and say, you know what? It's time to go to another village. And they're going to say, where are we going? No, we ain't going We, we, we ain't going. Put up verse 56 again. Let's close it out right here. The son of man did not come to what? Destroy. But to what? You know what made Jesus so successful, Denise? He knew his purpose. And when you don't know your purpose... You'll get off track. When you don't know your purpose, you'll get off track. When you know your purpose, it'll keep you focused. No, no, no. That's why some people don't do well at work. They don't know their purpose. When you don't know your purpose, that's what messes people up at work. You don't know your purpose. I'm not coming to work to learn who going with who. Who's sleeping with who? Who don't like who? I'm here to work. And a good clue that you're around the wrong folks is when you're around folks on the job and they say stuff like this. Child, they be wanting you to work and stuff up here. <laughs> purpose. 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 You can't just treat people any kind of way. God's taking you somewhere. And Jesus said, I love it. I love it. I love it, Yolanda, because here's what Jesus is basically saying. If you burn this village down, the next place we go to, they won't say, here comes Jesus. They will say, here comes the village burners. And people will literally start saying this. Yeah, I heard about that dude Jesus, heard about his disciples and all the miracles and stuff that he does. But you know what? If you don't do what he wants you to do, he'll burn it down. And all of us got some people close to us, Sister Mac, who are village burners. Some of you got some family you don't need to talk to every day. Because they village burners. And anytime you start telling them problems, issues, they be like, you want me to take care of that for you? <laughs> Everybody standing across the sanctuary. That's all I got today, y'all. I hope that's a good enough word for you. Purpose! Purpose.
Purpose determines behavior. Purpose. Purpose. And a good time to put distance between you and people is when they don't understand your purpose. Purpose. I want to give you a chance today to meet somebody who will give you purpose. Jesus says, I've come that they may have life and have it more abundant. Purpose. Give somebody a chance today to deal with opposition. It's everywhere. Opposition is everywhere. And the hardest place for people to receive opposition many times is in church. Because you're not expecting it. But let me help you here. The difference between church people and people is church people go to church. Did you catch that? Quit expecting when you come to church that they just a glow about them. Some of the meanest people in the world. Christ can help you. Christ. Church can help you. Church can help you. Care what you think about church. It's the best organization in the world. No other organization can do what the church can do. Church. But you got to make some changes. And you know what all of us have in common? God woke us up this morning. High five yourself. Say this is going to be a great day. Repeat after me, Lord, I pray for my whole row. Even myself. If somebody needs Christ in their life, church like Berean, change in how they live. When I finish praying, let them walk up front so you can better their whole life. Do it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, once again, I'm all out of moments, but I'm never out of message. And I trust that you will hold on to the word of God. And guess what? Guess what I'm holding on to? I'm holding on to my conference brochure, the Pastors and Leaders Conference that's coming up October 2nd, 3rd, and 4th right here at the Berean Christian Church. Contact our church office or go online. You want to register so that you cannot just meet us here, but beat us here. That's all of my time. Thanks for your time. And as always, you've been watching A Word for the Times. Thank you for watching A Word for the Times. Berean Christian Church is one church in three counties. In DeKalb County, we're located at 2201 Young Road, Stone Mountain, Georgia. In Gwinnett County, we're located at 1465 High Point Road, Snellville, Georgia. In Henry County, we're located at 171 Collier Road, Stockbridge, Georgia. To receive this message in its entirety or other dynamic messages by Dr. Kerwin B. Lee, please call 770-593-4421 or toll free 877-7-ACTS-17. That's 877-722-8717. Or visit us on the World Wide Web at BereanChristianChurch.org.